collect and that's why people get rectal cancer and colon cancer from these things. The sexual organs would show genetic damage. And where does radioactivity show up first in a mammal? In the milk. So then we got very interested in where these mutilations occurred, what time of year, which way was the wind blowing, and what was upwind from these locations, and we found in every single instance there was a nuclear site of some kind, a power plant, a weapons base, uh, a weapons storage installation, weapons manufacturing plant, a testing area, missile stockpile, uranium mines, and tailing piles waste disposal areas in every single instance we're upwind from these sites. From that, I deduce that whoever is doing it is trying to find out how much radiation has leaked into the atmosphere, the food chain, and the groundwater, and what is it doing to the living mammals in its path. The fact that they leave these carcasses laying out there is an act of terrorism. Literally. I mean, if you want to check for something in these animals, that's fine. But there's no reason why you couldn't take it somewhere else, chop it up, dispose of it, or eat it, or whatever. Why is it being left on the ground? That's an act of terrorism. It's done intentionally to scare people. Why? Maybe to create an alien threat from outer space. Maybe because aliens don't eat beef. Next slide, please. Sometimes these are seen in the sky, all the areas where these things occur. Next. Sometimes it's these things with something going up and down from them. Next. Sometimes these things are found, they're being found all over England. One of the incredible things about the crop circles in England is they are literally a vestige of some kind. There's a book called The Father of Lies. In the back of that book, it gives an example of the, the cipher that the secret societies used in ancient times to communicate with their members so that people who were not initiates would not learn the secrets of the society. The symbols of their cipher match exactly the crop circles found in the ground in England. Now this was by accident that I ran across this. There's a woman in California who lives in um, Victorville, who is a wonderful woman, discovered this. She had been looking at pictures of crop circles. She had the book, Father of Lies, and she was reading the book, and it struck her all at once. These are the same. And so she let us know, and we have verified it. They are exactly the same. Secret societies have a lot to do with what's going on, believe me. Next slide. Sometimes these things are seen. Next slide. Always they find this. Next. Then we got to wondering, gosh. All through history, there's records of people and animals being found with the blood sucked out of them. Is this the source of the vampire legends? We back through history, we found that there are accounts of animals and humans who have been mutilated in this classic manner. Next slide, please. This is some of the information a man by the name Bill English has released. It is some of the exact information that I saw while I was in naval intelligence. He was working as a, uh, well, he was working in England at a national security agency listening post, really. And he saw the same documents there. Next slide. This is uh, UFO uh, observer's instruction seat uh, from the Air Technical Intelligence Command 
which tells you how to report UFOs at a time when the United States Air Force said they were not reporting UFOs, didn't care about UFOs, they didn't exist. Next. Next. It's all official Air Force forms. Next. 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 Now this is part of Air Force Regulation number 200-2 Alpha, Unidentified Flying Objects, Intelligence. Now, this is significant. The Air Force is not supposed to lie to us, but they were telling us, no, UFOs do not exist. We're not interested in UFOs. There is no evidence of UFOs. Anybody who says they say a UFO is crazy. We don't care about UFOs. Yet they have written a U.S. Air Force regulation called 200-2, and this says on the cover sheet, direct communication is authorized between ATIC and other Air Force activities in matters pertaining to UFO investigation. Specifically, the ATIC may call upon the commander of the 1127th Field Activity Group, Fort Belvoir, Virginia, to conduct further field investigations if review of the initial report indicates such a requirement. In this event, the headquarters, 1127th U.S. Air Force Field Activity Group, will prepare the final report by order of the Secretary of the Air Force, Thomas D. White, Chief of Staff. Next page. This tells how to report it, what forms to use, identifying information, weather and winds, comments of preparing officer classification, time and date of sighting, manner of observation. Next. General information, releasing information, that's funny, releasing information it says under here. All information of releases concerning UFOs regardless of origin or nature will be released to the public or unofficial persons or organizations by the Office of Information Services Office of the Secretary of the Air Force. This includes replies to correspondence except congressional inquiries submitted direct to ATIC and other Air Force activities by private individuals. Exceptions. In response to local inquiries revolt, resulting from any UFO reported in the vicinity of an Air Force base, information regarding a sighting may be released to the press of the general public by the commander of the Air Force base concerned only if it has been positively identified as a familiar or known object.
They all tell the same story. They all describe the craft exactly the same. They all describe the beings in the craft the same. They all have uh, describes the same things that have not been made public knowledge, and they don't know each other. And these are people from all around the world. One of the best abductee researchers that I know is here in this room with us, Robin Quayle. One of the one of the uh, implants is inserted up through the nose and is lodged next to the optic nerve in this region. Another implant is inserted beneath the skull cap next to the medulla oblongata in this region. Another implant is found subcutaneously behind usually the right ear and can be seen and felt. I always like to watch everybody feel behind their right ear when they say that. <laughs> Implants have been found in the wrist, in the calf, and in the lower arm. Next slide. Now, this is very strange because just before these began happening and after we began finding these implants, we began noticing newspaper articles like this. Computer chip implants can help find lost pets, and it goes to outline how this happens. And it tells us that the sheriff's department and the police department in the cities are given electronic equipment to communicate with a satellite that the government has put up. And if you put an implant in your pets, this satellite can find your pet wherever it is when it's lost, and your local law enforcement people, by tuning into this satellite with their electronic equipment, and tell you where your pet is and go get it. <laughs> then, next slide please. Then you hear Dan Rather on the 6 o'clock news say that the pet implant program has worked so well that 97% of all lost pets that have been implanted are being found and returned to their owners that you should have your children implanted. He said this in 1989. Then you see in the Los Angeles Times, not the National Enquirer, ladies and gentlemen, the Los Angeles Times on 12-12-89, forecast 10 changes for the coming decade. And one of those 10 changes, number four in fact, will become necessary in the future with the availability and widespread use of electrical and chemical implants that will allow 24-hour-a-day control of individuals' behavior. Now are you beginning to get interested in the abductee experience? I hope that you are. You might be next. Next slide. Uh, this is just a letter to me from another researcher. Next slide. Who sent me this? It's in my book. It's the Foreign uh, Broadcast Information Service Foreign Press Note. The Foreign Broadcast Information Service is a division of the Central Intelligence Agency, which monitors foreign broadcasts on radio, television, military, civilian uh, broadcast waves, and gleans information. This entire report. Each paragraph is a separate report of flying saucer or UFO reports in the Soviet Union during the period covered by this report, and this report was issued 22 November 1989. You never heard of any. Every paragraph. One of these paragraphs refers to a crashed craft on a hill from which they recovered pieces of technology that we're not capable of manufacturing. Next page, please. All of these. Now you'll see at the top is what they found up here. You look closer so I can read it. Some of the scientists have concluded that the object that crashed into Hill 611 was an extraterrestrial space vehicle constructed by highly intelligent beings. Doctor of Chemical Sciences V. Vysotsky Good thing I'm not Russian, I couldn't talk. Stated that without doubt, this is evidence of a high technology and it is not anything of a natural or terrestrial origin. He cited the fact that the remnants of fine mesh, including
included bits of thin threads with a diameter of only 17 microns, and that these threads, in turn, were composed of even thinner strands twisted into braids. Extremely thin gold wires were discovered intertwined in the finest threads, evidence of an intricate technology beyond the present capabilities of terrestrial science, according to this man that I can't pronounce his name.